Do I start with the daddy issues, the manipulation, the lying, the cool battle scenes, the utterly boring high school scenes? I have no idea where to start with this because this show has me feeling things. Many, many things. And I hope that I can get all of those out. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking Code Geass today. That's right, it was recommended to me again by some people in my community that I needed to watch Code Geass because this thing is the peak of peak from what I have heard. And honestly, I couldn't get through it the first time and I will go into that, but I don't know where to start with this review. So I guess I will just start kind of from the beginning of the show or with the premise of the show. Code Geass is essentially the story of a wayward prince who was excommunicated from his family and wants to get back at them and basically ruin the empire. So he goes on a revenge quest to do such. Now you get some magical powers involved in that. You get a lot of like military tactician stuff involved in that. And you get a character that in the beginning beginning, I thought was kind of like a Mary Sue, like he was almost a little too OP. However, they walked a little bit of that back. Now, through this whole revenge quest, you got many different parts. You got him interacting with kids from high school. You got him interacting with people in his militia group, and he was obviously using his secret identity known as Zero. And then you get him interacting with old time friends, which are technically enemies now. Him interacting with, you know, his people who were part of his family, who is also his enemy now. And there's just so much going on in this show that it was hard to quantify in like a straightforward review on straightforward impressions. So my history with this show is I actually tried watching it about a year, year and a half ago because it was recommended to me back then again by members of the community. Well, I tried watching Code Geass and I remember watching like 12 episodes of it, but when asked about, oh, well, you just didn't make it far enough into the show for it to get good, I was like, well, I made it 12 episodes in. And they're like, well, what do you remember? And I, I told them, well, I remember him, you know, meeting his brother and revealing that he's actually alive, which by the way, the character's name is Lelouch. So Lelouch meets his brother and he's like, hey, I'm alive. And he's like, oh my gosh. And then he ices his brother. And he's like, dude, that's like the first or second episode. I'm like, no, no, I felt like that was later. Well, the issue that it had with me is that when I went back to give it a second chance, I, I watched all of it. And I realized there was nothing for me outside of that one scene in the first, like, I think it was 13 or 14 episodes that was memorable. Because I was like, oh yeah, I do remember this. Why didn't I remember it right after I watched it? And it is because this show, you must have to have a certain mindset to get into it off the start because the character of Lelouch did not come across to me as endearing or cool or like badass or any of those things. He came across to me almost Mary Sue-like. And, and, and I know a lot of people are gonna get mad when I say that, but that's just how I felt. I'm like, he's the pretty boy in school. All the girls want him, right? He is the master tactician in school. He all suddenly can go from playing chess to just being an expert coordinator when it comes to military tactics. You know, he can uh, coordinate and lead a militia group now that was originally like a terrorist group, and now they're no longer that type of group. And now they, they all follow him and they adore him and he's super awesome and leading them to victory. And there was just so much in the first part of this series that I just couldn't get into. And it was really, really distracting for me. That was my major concern with this, but I stuck it out through the second chance through. And all of a sudden, about 15 episodes in, things start happening. They start bringing in other interesting characters to me, characters who have this Gios power, right? Code Gios. That's when it started getting, and you're like, oh, wow, okay, so there's more lore here. And as soon as they started getting deeper into the lore, that's when my brain started to kick in because I was like, all right, now we're getting interesting. Now we're now we're getting to the point where the world is starting to expand and you're actually starting to see literally like 15 episodes in how the struggles of this guy are really starting to affect him and how the path that he is on is starting to really mess with his life. 
So one of the first things that really struck me was the girl, and I don't remember her name because I'm gonna be perfectly honest, she was just not a memorable character to me, but the girl who had a crush on Lelouch and really liked him, I don't remember her name. She it was red hair, pink hair, something like that. Anyway, she was a sweetheart in the show, but the thing that really got to me was like, oh, he made this decision, and now this girl who he is very, he's friends with, who likes him, his decision killed her dad. And I was like, ooh, ooh, that's an interesting plot point. How are they gonna deal with it? And the way that they dealt with it was the way that they dealt with a lot of things in this show, which I d don't know if I like or if, if I hate. It's weird. This show has me in some version of a middle ground. It's like, man, it's got some awesome moments. But they use memory erasure a lot. And I feel like people losing their memories was a way to like extend the plot past the point of where it actually mattered, right? Because a lot of this stuff comes back up and then people do start to remember eventually. And then you see the conclusion to those plot points, which I feel like could have been something that had memory erasure not been a thing, could have shortened up the show like a lot, right? We could have wrapped up some plot points a lot sooner. And again, that being said, I kind of get it because it leads to a little bit more tension in the show, but I also feel like it's kind of manufactured, but I also feel like maybe it was necessary, but I don't know. This show has me conflicted, man with the memory erasure type things happening and with this Gios power and the deepening of the power, you realize that different people have it and it's in this ancient thing. And his dad, who is essentially, he, they call him Britannian, but he, 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 Every time the Britannians are on the screen, they play this like music that absolutely sounds Russian. So like, I don't know if this is like, like, you know, like you get a Russian who bangs a Brit and the bam, you get Britannians. I don't know how all this works, but that's just what I'm going with here. So as the show continues on, he starts to see how the world around him gets affected with his choices. And now all of a sudden things that he thought were going to happen are not going to happen. His plans don't fall perfectly in line anymore, which is where I started go, okay, he's not actually a Mary Sue, but how is this all gonna work out? And as the series go on, Lelouch turns into like more and more of a monster and commits more and more to the bit. And that was very weird at times. As people were dying around him, as, as characters were losing faith in him, as all of this stuff, it was like, none of that matters, I'm committing to the bit. And then in season two, he finally gets to the point where he confronts his father. He's like, why didn't you save my mother? And then kind of out of nowhere, his mother returns in a way. So the mother, she absolutely got, you know, game overed in the show, but she transferred her consciousness into this one character who had memory problems. So they kind of alluded to it and now she's back. But by the way, this big plan that we have with this Gios power that we're basically just going to take over the consciousness of the world and remove the, the, the freedom from, of people to live their lives and choose like, like that we believe in that. And he was like, yeah, but why didn't you care about your kids? And they're like, of course we cared about you kids. That's why we sent you away to Japan to to be away because when you care about people, you 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 ship them off to other countries because you care about them. Now that whole couple of episodes was just strange, and then the way that it wrapped up again also strange because they're also working in an alternate dimension, which I didn't mind. I really like kind of the whole lore behind the Gios power. But then the rest of season two is just like at this breakneck pace. It's him constantly going at his uh, brothers and sisters or his, his actually his brother uh, for the power of the Britannian Empire. He now no longer has the respect of the people. He's losing that drastically. Uh, it, it's in one of the scenes in season one, which was absolutely nuts, the Gios power kind of goes psycho on him because he loses control of it, which is something he was told about. And he basically causes a massacre. And that was, I was like, oh wait, are they gonna commit to that? Yes, yes, they absolutely, and I watched that scene and I was like, well, that's interesting. Cause they took the sweetest character that cared about everyone. And then with one command turned her into like, can I even say this like a super racist? Again, one of those points that that shows that he's losing control. He's not this perfect being. He does 
do things. But again, when that stuff happens, he just commits to it, right? It's like, oh, I caused this bad thing to happen. It was out of my control. The choices that I'm making are absolutely destroying people's lives. Don't care. On the outward face, I'm committing to the bit. He gets scenes where he struggles with some of this stuff, but he's got to commit to the bit, right? He's got to commit to the bit. And through this whole show, I was confused all the way up until the end. It's like, man, you are causing devastation and massacres, and we can see that you're struggling with this. And they didn't explain it. They didn't explain why he had to become this monster who took over the Britannian Empire until the very last like few scenes of the show where his friend who they were kind of I'll call star-crossed brothers where Lelouch's best friend I can't Suzaku Shin I can't remember what his name was but anyway his best friend who was on the opposite side of him just kind of joins him that was still confusing that was rough that wasn't done well either how he just all of a sudden like joined him and had super fealty to him it was weird right because Lelouch manipulated that guy and made him want to live when he would have been totally fine standing up for his morals, but because he was brainwashed through the Gios power, he had to live and fight to live. And then all of a sudden, now he's just working with him because they both want everybody to live under freedom. Maybe I missed something. There's a good chance I missed something. The action in the show was really good. The, the, the military stuff going back and forth was good, and, but, but there was just some things in this that were just all time, like the writing could have been better. The writing could have absolutely been better. But in the last few episodes, the friend now says, okay, I'm gonna take on your alter ego. I'm going to become Zero. And while you're parading all these prisoners of war down and you are now the emperor of the Britannian Empire, you're gonna stand up and Lelouch set it up to where he was game overed. He was game overed with a sword through the chest, fell down, kind of an interesting scene. And you're like, oh, he was so committed to destroying that system, he was willing at the end to give up his own life to it, which logically makes sense. But the lead up to that final scene was, I think it was so shocking because it felt like the writer didn't really have a good explanation to get him from, okay, he's kind of fighting to like get rid of the system and like protect people. But as he realizes he can't protect people, he then, turns himself into a monster and then he commands the Britannian Empire and then instead of doing that and making people's lives better he's just gonna off himself to disband the Britannian Empire but there was nothing in the middle there where it was like he was going to try to be the leader of the Britannian Empire to make it good for people and then fail. It felt like there's like a story arc there that's just missing. Um, I didn't see the movies, so maybe that was there, but it felt like there was a storyline there where he was really gonna try to make the Britannian Empire something great for all people and not just the Britannians and then subjugate the rest of the world. But he just went from, okay, I'm the leader of the Britannian Empire, I'm a monster, people hate me, and instead of trying to make himself look good, he was just like, nope, I'm just gonna off me by way of, uh, by proxy, and uh, yeah, and and then the Britannian Empire is just gonna, you know, be no more because I think he successfully kind of got rid of everybody who could challenge the throne at that point. And essentially, this leads to the idea that Japan is liberated. So as I'm watching this show, I get to this point where I'm like, okay, it starts off slow. It almost lost me again, but I stuck it in there. Then it gets exciting. Then it gets to a point where it starts pumping the brakes again. Then it gets to a point where it's exciting again. And then this show is like a roller coaster. By roller coaster, I mean you're sitting on the roller coaster and you have that chain that pulls you up the roller coaster and you're going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. And 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 all of a sudden you're like, man, are we gonna hit that first big drop yet? That's like really exciting. And it nope, it's still going. It's still and then you finally hit that big drop and you're like, Man, all right, now we're into the story. And then after you get through that first big drop, you hit another chain and it's got to take you up another thing. And you're like, what, why, why did we slow down again? Why did we slow down again? Why are certain things being rushed? Why is the story getting reset by memory set? Oh my God, that's amazing. Did you do that action is killer. You know, oh my gosh, this setup is awesome. This new character, the lore. Wow, all of this stuff. Oh, we're back in high school again. This show, had me and still has me so confused as to whether or not I am going to think about it in a good light or a bad light 
Right now I'm still favorable to it, but man, it was rough getting through. So Code Geass for me is so interesting because usually when I watch a show, I either love it or I hate it off the bat. I'm not somewhere in the middle. I would say that even with all of its problems, and a lot of people told me this, they're like, dude, Code Geass, it's got some issues, but its high notes absolutely outweigh its low notes. And after, because I finished it over the weekend, and after about three or four days of processing it and really thinking about how I was going to do this review, and all of those approaches failed, I think I agree with the people that the high notes of Code Geass absolutely outweigh the low notes. I don't know if I would say that this is one of the best shows that's ever been made. I don't think that I would say that Lelouch is a fantastic character. And that's just his writing. The motivations just weren't, the motivations weren't as succinct as I think they could have been. But the inevitable conclusion makes sense to the premise of the show, makes sense to what Lelouch wanted to do, right? His motivation changed a little bit. He wanted to get rid of the Britannian Empire so that way he could live out his life with his sister or make a safer world for his sister. And at the end of the day, he accomplished that. And at the end of the day, this, this was a wild ride. This was a wild ride, but fair warning to those who are wanting to check it out. It's, if you're like me, it's gonna take you more than halfway through season one before you start getting interested in it. And then it's gonna have some points that you're just like, God, why are we back to the boring parts again? But all of that being said, Code Geass is probably gonna get another watch from me because I'm still interested. But before that happens, I have to watch Death Note now because I've never seen Death Note and that was your next recommendation. So I'm gonna be sharing my thoughts on that next week. And before all of that happens, you guys need to go back and watch last week's video where I was talking about Tokyo Revengers and the issues that I had with that show because my dear God, Tokyo Revengers, what, what even are you? Can you even be called a show? And with all of that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for watching and until next time, cheers everybody.